Fellowship. So let me tell you who I am here first. My buttons work. Okay. So my pen name is Ruth Apollonia, and I've got my little logo over here. It says Affirming Faith Through Noteworthy Novels. So that's what my goal is to do. So I am the authoress of the Annabelle of Ankeny series that's published currently by Marion Press. But really, I think of myself more as a storyteller. And there's a little trailer later on in my presentation that will tell you what my story is about. Okay, so let's take a look at the title and make sure we all know what we're talking about. So when we are talking about discipleship, what are, what are we talking about? You guys know? Discipleship, what does it mean to be a disciple? Uh-huh. In the blue shirt? Following Jesus, yes, exactly. So being a follower of Christ, very good. Now what do we mean by arts? Yes. Um, like, um, uh, yes, yeah, like um, artwork and all that kind of stuff. So the dictionary.com describes it as imaginative, creative, and non-scientific branches of knowledge. So then if we look at knowledge, what what do we mean by knowledge? So this is acquiring truths, facts, um, especially through the study. Okay, so Catholicism contains the fullness of truth, right? All right, and God has given different talents to different people, right? You all have different talents. And these talents aren't meant to be hidden but to be displayed so other people can um, benefit from them. And so you can show the glory of God, right? So Catholics are called to bring Christ to the world. So to bring truth, beauty, and goodness to the world should be the goal of every artist, right? Okay, so all together then, we're talking about showing your love of Christ through the creative means, so the talent that he has given you. Okay, so this could be literature, music, movies, so screenwriting, um, and then the regular art kind of stuff that you think about, like sculptures and paintings and that type of thing. Okay, so let's take a a look at some examples um, that you guys might be familiar with. So, does anybody know who this is? <laughs> so it's Jonathan Rooney, but who does he play in the TV series? Jesus. Yes. So he plays Jesus in the Chosen series, right? So he is using his um, his talent of being an actor to bring Christ to the world. See that? Okay, let's look at some music groups. Does anybody know this music group right there? Oh, you do? Oh, awesome. Do you know the name of the group? Okay. They are called the Hillbilly Thomas. So they are um, monks, and they get together, and they write songs, and they play music, and it talks about God and everything like that. Isn't that cool? So they're bringing um, God to the world. All right, let's look at another person. Does anybody recognize this? Yeah, who is this? Yes, very good. This is Matt Maurer, and so he is a singer, and he sings a lot of worship music, and so he brings Christ to the world that way. Okay, now you guys might not know um, these two people. Oh, I bet they do. By the way they look. (laughs) Does anybody recognize them? No, okay. So this is Chuck Solomon and... Oh, sorry, Carrie Solomon and Chuck Gonzalez. I'm not quite sure how to say his last name. But they are, um, they write screenplays and then they're also producers. So do you guys know the God's Not Dead movies? Have, have, you, anybody, have you seen them? You see it in your house and you haven't watched it yet. Um, so yeah, they've made several movies. There's several in the series of the God's Not Dead movies. And then they also did the Unplanned movie. And then recently they did the Nefarious, but that's, you guys probably haven't seen that, but it's like, it's kind of scary.
scary. Um, okay, so here is a trailer for my my books, my series, so you guys can see what, what I do to bring Christ to the world. I am Annabelle of Ankeny, and I was taken from my family at the age of five. They took me to an island far, far away, but I ran away and hid from those disguised men. There was a man on the island, Peter, a kind, kind man, my angel. He raised me as his own. He taught me how to hunt, how to swim, how to be thankful for all that God has given us. That forbidden island became my home, and I felt like a princess. I wanted to stay there evermore. But Peter was wise. He knew someday I would have to return to Ankeny. He didn't want me to share the same lot as his wife and children. So he taught me in the art of self-protection. He prepared me, but when those men came back, those Demolites, they went after him and he told me to run, so I ran. With torch and sword they came and the trees caught on fire. But I ran, I ran like he told me to do. I was able to take one of the Demolite's boats and get off the island. But I left Peter, my angel, to the flames. But I did make it to Ankeny. He wanted me to make it to Ankeny. So I got off the island and made it to a land I hardly had any memories of. There is so much more to say, for when I found my way back to Ankeny, that's when my story truly began. Join Annabelle as her incredible tale continues in Ruth Apollonia's Annabelle of Ankeny, Burdens of the Mind, available at shopmercy.org. Keyword and search box, Annabelle. So let's look at the importance of arts. Like why, why is art so important, especially storytelling and music with songs? Can you guys hear me? Okay, there we go. So we learn through story and through songs, right? So how did you learn your ABCs, right? A, B, C, D, right? So you learned it through a song, okay? So this is why the arts are so important, okay? That's how we learn. So, St. Augustine of Hippo famously said, Our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they rest in you. So the goal is through your art to touch the hole that's inside every heart. Okay? You can't fill it because it can only be filled by God, but the truth, beauty, and goodness can touch it. So when truth is presented, even if it's a fictitious story, or you know maybe it's a song or some moving sculpture or something, um, it touches a part uh, of the heart that's searching for God, okay? And it's yearning for the truth. So like in my books, I do this by having, um, like I present the intercessory power of the body of Christ. I have my characters that are striving um, for virtue and that they want to receive the sacraments, so just presenting it through a story. Okay, so how do you know if your art is pleasing to God? Okay, so number one, your relationship with God will increase. Okay, you're going to draw closer to God, closer to the sacraments. Your virtue will increase, so you will become more humble, less prideful. And you're going to draw others closer to Christ or inspire them to do art. So Hannah Whitmore is um, a fan of the Ankeny series. And on her own bulletin,
Coalition, she, um, she made some artwork and she sent it to me. Um, so this is actually a whole poster's worth, um, but some of it kind of gives away the story. So I just put in a, a little bit that just shows some of the scenes of when Annabelle is on the island, because eventually she gets off. Um, so this is her depiction of what inspired her because she was so inspired by my art. And so she wants to inspire other people. And then here is uh, another picture that she did. And she was 17 at the time, so she's probably like 19 now, so. Okay, big word, magnanimity. Does anybody know what magnanimity is? Have you ever heard that word? No, okay. <laughs> so that means wanting to do great things for the Lord. So don't be afraid of having a hunger, a spark within you, a zeal to do great things for the Lord, because that is magnanimity. It's actually a virtue. Okay. But at the same time, we still need to be humble. So that means that we are rooted in the truth. So we recognize that any talents that we have come from God. Okay, And um, that also means that if we don't have a talent, we are truthful about that. So like if we're not a very good singer, then we recognize, okay, I'm, I'm not a good singer. That's not the talent God gave me, right? Um, and so you want to develop your talents, okay? And strive to perfect them. And this is a lifelong journey. Okay, so when I, when I started writing, uh, the series. I was writing it just for myself, and I worked on it about four years before I ever thought about publishing it. And it was only after I thought, you know what, this story is pretty good. I want to share it with the world. Did I pursue publishing? Okay, so what makes for good art? Okay, and I'm, I'm going to do specifically for a book. So it needs to be both worth and worthy of the reader's time. And what do I mean by this? So for the worthiness, um, we're talking about, this is like the grammar, the punctuation, so all the structure of the story needs to be there. Um, this is often elements that can be learned, right? So you know you have to learn about your art that, that you want to do. And then this, a copy editor can also help you with this area. So the worth of the book is looking at like the intriguing plot, the, uh, compelling characters and the moral lesson to be learned. And in my case, I write to evangelize, okay? So I want to draw other people closer to the sacraments and closer to the church, closer to Christ. So in, in any case, um, you know, whether it be like a sculpture or songwriting, um, the point is you, you have to learn about that craft, okay? And you develop it, and then so you make it really, really well so that it can um, touch other people's hearts. Okay, so how is a is a novel written? How is the story made? So I heard it once said that it starts with a question, and that was true in my case as well. My question was, in what situation would someone be in when all they had to do was to learn about God? Like, well, if they were on a deserted island and they had nothing else to do. But then there had to be somebody on the island to teach the child, okay? So that is how Peter got there. But then the question arises, why is he there? What else can be learned while you're on this island, such as like how to survive, you know, which, um, which berries to eat, you know, that, that type of stuff. And then the question is, well, why is she on the island? And this is kind of how this, the whole story kind of came to be. Okay, so my prayer when I, when I write is, God, give me the words you want me to write, the stories you have said, the truths you want told. <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at the art of discipleship. What am I talking about by that? So discipleship, we still mean following Christ exactly the same. So this time, when I say art, what we're talking about is the principles, the techniques, 
um, methods governing any craft, trade, or profession. So it's kind of thinking about um, being a follower of Christ as um, that's like your, your profession, what you're doing in your life. Okay, so how to follow Christ. Um, and this is something that I, I've recently learned that there, there's a certain intentionality to it. So what do I mean by this? Um, so scheduling God in your day. So looking at the prayers, the sacraments, um, you know, reading Bible stories, um, saying the rosary, getting all that, that kind of stuff within your day. So this should change as you grow older. So as you grow older, it should get deeper. You should do more. But the habits that you have right now will help will help you when you're older to keep um, doing your, your intentional prayers and everything. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about, okay? So as a fourth, fourth grader, like what could your day possibly look like, right? So in the morning, so let's say you say your morning prayers before you even leave your bedroom. Does, does any of you guys do that already? Yeah, good, some of you, very good. Um, so, you know, that might be something that you keep in mind before you leave, before you go out your door of your bedroom, say a prayer to God, okay? And then, of course, before um, any of your meals, you want to say your prayers, right, um, to bless the food. If you have a chance to go to Mass daily with your, your parents or if you go to a Catholic school and can go to Mass daily, um, that is a great thing. Do any of you guys try to go to daily mass? Oh, oh, oh awesome. To us too. Very good. Oh, yes. you guys too? Oh, awesome. I love to hear that. Very cool. Um, and then let's say, so you, you went to mass and then you do your schooling, okay? So whether you're homeschooled or you go to, to a school. And then, of course, when you're at school and you have your meal, you're going to pray again. Um, and then let's say once you get home, you say a family rosary, right? Did you, any of you guys say a rosary with your families? Oh, that is awesome. Sometimes at night. Very cool. Oh, that is so good. I love to see that. Very cool. And then let's say um, you read a Bible story before you go to bed. Does anybody read a Bible story? Oh, very cool. I love to see this. You guys are already on the path of being intentional. Very cool. Awesome. So now let's look and see with a high schooler. Like how, how would that change as a high schooler? And this is, oh, let's see here. Oh, and of course, prayers before you go to bed. Okay. So, um, as a high schooler, you might have a morning offering prayer. Um, and you might even say this before you even get out of bed, right? And you might start saying the Angelus prayers at 6 a.m., noon, 6 p.m. Do you do it already? Awesome. You guys too? Not at 12. Oh, just at 12. Well, you know what? It's good to start somewhere. you got to start somewhere. So that is awesome. Very cool. Okay. And then, you know, of course, you should still be praying before every meal. All right. And if if you're still able in high school to go to daily mass, keep going. Okay. And you might say the chaplet of divine mercy, maybe at 3 p.m. Do you guys say that already? Very cool. I love to hear this. You guys are awesome. All right, and then um, keep saying the rosary. So even if you don't say it as a family, you say it on your own, right? You start taking responsibility and doing it yourself. Okay, and then doing some scriptural reading with meditation. So this gets a, um, a little bit deeper. So basically when you, when you read, you want to think, what is God trying to tell me through this little bit that I read. Okay. So that's you know, thinking and asking God, um, having a conversation with God is basically what meditation is. Okay, so let's see as an adult how things change. So adults are very busy and you know they have kids and that kind of stuff. 
So sometimes you have to wake up early just to get in your prayers and everything. So let's say that you wake up early to do Lexio Divina for 30 minutes, okay? Um, so you go out of your way. You're still saying the Angelus, 6 a.m., 6 p.m. Uh, you're praying the rosary, and you're, you're not just doing it to check a box and say, I got the rosary in, but you're doing it to honor Christ, right? To look at his life and honor the life that he lived. And then, you know, still go into daily mass if you can. Um, so basically, do you see how it's intentionally living your life for Christ? Do you guys see that? Are you doing? Okay, so that is the goal. Okay, so let me um, talk about my closing thoughts here. Okay, so you want to live intentionally for Christ now, and you want to let that relationship deepen And as you um, as you grow older, okay? So it's going to deepen and deepen and deepen. Because you know what? Love always demands more, okay? So if you're here, you know, the next day God wants you here because he's always demanding more because God is love. Right. So you always have to strive for more and more and more and grow closer and closer to Christ. Okay, so right now you guys should explore your talents. You know what what are your talents? Um, and maybe if you're not sure, you can you can try things out and see what are you good at, what you're mm, not so good at. I should probably stay away from that. Um, and then learn about. It. So if you find something that you're really good at, kind of learn about it. What are the techniques that make it better? Um, what do I need to do to help myself get better at this? Okay, so you're learning and you're growing. And, you know, there are some people that aren't artsy. <laughs> and, you know, they're more scientific and they like math and they like science and they could, um, they just don't like art, you know. And that's fine because, you know what, <laughs> I saw a hand. <laughs> you know what, that is okay, but... Um, so you just have to, you know, recognize that God gives different talents to different people, and that is completely okay. And at the same time, you know, so your talent is science and math, and, and that's all, all great. But you can also appreciate those that are striving to bring truth, beauty, and goodness to um, the world through their arts. So, you, you know, you can still appreciate it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Whatever your talent is, make sure your art is worth and worthy of people's time. It draws you and others closer to Christ, and it spreads beauty, truth, and goodness to all the world. Okay? And when you do that, um, your talent that's from God, you're giving to God. Okay, And you're, you're showing the world your discipleship through your art. All right. So, um, oh, one last quote here. So this is from St. Catherine of Siena. She was a doctor of the church. And she said, be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world ablaze. Okay? So intentional discipleship. All right, so anybody have any questions? No questions? Okay. There's one. Oh, yes. Uh, how many books did I get Oh, thank you. That's good. Has so anybody I read these? You, they might yeah. have. Um, did, did, yeah, has anybody read these or heard about them? It, maybe if you had older. I've heard about them. Oh, okay. Did you hear from your siblings? No, my brother reads them. Oh, oh, awesome. Very cool. Does he like them? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to hear that. Okay, so currently there are three that have been published. I'm trying to get them in the third here. So the first one is Annabelle of Ankeny, Burdens of the Mind, and they go in alphabetical order here. Um, the next one is Heart's Relief. The third one is Kingdom's Call. And then the fourth one is Lasting Word. Um, it's being edited right now, so my goal is for it to be out uh, for Christmas. So that's, that's my goal. So we'll see if it happens. And I'm going to try to wrap up the whole series with the fifth one. So that's my goal. Okay, well, uh, I think there was another question over here. Yes. Oh, you don't have a question? 
You forgot it. Okay. All right. Publishing it? Like self publishing? Oh, you're starting to write it. Okay. That is awesome to have a goal like that. Very cool. Yes. There it is. <laughs> yeah. There are several characters and they like end up getting married and stuff. Oh. So. <laughs> Good romance. Yeah. More, more than just one. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, all right, well, thank you guys for listening so well. And I have to go get this same presentation downstairs, so I have to, like, move it. So thank you guys so much.